Okay, Al at Hanksters of Daytona. And we got a really, really neat, iconic car for you here. Everybody used to listen to the Beach Boys and Jan and Dean, and everyone has heard about a fuel injected Stingray, which everyone knows, and how about a 413? That's this car, 1962, first year, 413 Max Wedge car. And it's a real Max Wedge engine in this Dodge Dart 330 body, lightest one that they made. Same as the Plymouth Savoy. This car was Dodge's rendition of that. Very, very light two-door post sedan, 116 inch wheelbase, great drag race car, great drag car. And the fuel injected Stingray in a 413, I love Corvettes. That fuel injected Stingray didn't have a prayer against the 413 wedge, not even a prayer. This car is sitting with the correct <coughs> max wedge intake on it. It has a set of Hollies on it as opposed to AFB Carters, which are actually an upgrade for this car. It has the correct cast iron header type exhaust manifolds on it that, that are in incredible shape. Press the light distributor, correct era 1962 radiator. The car is just an absolute knockout beautiful car. Both of these air cleaners fit up into this custom made hood with a scoop on it to give you a ram air effect for these two Holley carburetors, both 500s I believe. They have stainless steel lines on them, dual fuel filters. Everything is done to the nth degree on this car. Every little tiny detail has been addressed in this engine compartment and in the car. Fantastic running car. It's a four speed car, 391 gears, pause attraction. This car hurts your ears when you stand on it. It's absolutely a fantastic car to drive. Lots of fun. Okay, with the hood shut. You can't see the magic underneath here, but we know it's there. But underneath this car is just as nice as the top of this car. However, it does have the era period correct scoop that would have been put on in 1962 for the cold air induction for this car. Every little detail, every minute detail to perfection has been addressed on this vehicle. The chrome, all just as nice as could possibly be. The stainless steel is polished to look like chrome, highly polished, real, real deep luster. The paint speaks for itself. The car it looks like it's a foot deep. It's absolutely gorgeous. Everything lines up as it should. Your Dodge emblem in the front, the Dodge lettering is all just as brand new and clean and every piece of chrome is as nice as can be. The Dodge um, insignia on the front, same way. Uh, no deterioration whatsoever. The grill, you can see there's not a mark, not a scratch, not even a little ding in it anywhere. Front chrome on the bumper is phenomenal. Our little peekaboo hidden, hidden uh, turn signal parking lights back there are just as nice and clean as can be. Car sets as it should. Fit and finish. All your seams, as you can see on this car, are just absolutely gorgeous. This is just such a neat, neat car and one of the hottest color combinations you could ever possibly get. It's red and it got red seats and a red uh, carpeting in it, red headliner. I mean, everything on this car is red. It just screams at you whenever you're standing there looking at it. Fantastic looking car. Front end, flawless. There's not an indication of anything that you could even pick at one little tiny imperfection. The car's beautiful. Okay, going down the driver's side of the car, of course, we have the dog dishes and the uh, painted rims, which would have been correct for the car. That's the way these cars came in 1962. Again, looking at the size of the car, the um, stainless is just highly polished. No marks, no scuffs, no dings, no marks. Even the era correct double post rear view mirror on the driver's door. Price one of those ones to see what a Mopar would cost. That would, or, uh, Dart uh, 330 designation on the side. Uh, the, Front fenders and the doors and the rocker panels all match perfectly. Uh, door wipes, whiskers, everything is just as brand new as it was in 1962 when it left the factory. All the rubbers are nice and fresh and new, just as nice and clean as can be. No tinted glass in it. Don't need it. Just slows you down. Um, wipers, arms, and blades, highly polished stainless again, correct for the air of the car. 
Um, the car is just as straight as can be. Door handles, crumbs a foot deep. The locking mechanism, just the same way. Where the doors go onto the quarters, and Nate is just as nice as can be. Your upper trim, no marks, no dings in it. Around the window, the drip molding. Look at this, there's absolutely nothing. It's, it's so finely polished that it looks like chrome. The whole car's that way. Every piece of bright metal on this car is polished to look like chrome. No marks on the roof, no marks on the sides, no things in the door, nothing. It's just a, a car that there's, there's no imperfections that you can see. Obviously, this car never came this way in 62. In 62, they weren't really, really up on their game with uh, quality control at that point. But someone really addressed that issue. Quarter panels, same way, no marks, no scuffs, no dings anywhere. Again, all the chrome, this is chrome here, not stainless steel. And again, to differentiate between the stainless and the chrome is almost impossible because they're so uh, lustrous and, 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 and such a deep luster to them. They're just, they're both flawless. Okay, going around the back part of the car, same as the front. The chrome is just absolutely flawless, just as nice as you could ever find. Even where it matches the tail lights and, and backup lights, in this case, uh, the little uh, piece of chrome on the uh, trunk lid is lining up just perfectly with it. The lenses themselves are nice and clean and fresh looking. Chrome on the back bumper matches the one in the front. It's just, there's no marks, no scuffs. It looks a foot deep with uh, uh, show quality chrome on it. Um, gaps around the uh, rear deck on this thing are just as the hood. Just as nice as you could possibly find. You couldn't possibly uh, uh, get the car to fit any better than it does. Correct uh, turn down exhaust for 1962 in the back. That's the way they would have come. It would not have had chrome extensions on it at that era. This is the way they came. Great looking car around back. Okay, going down the uh, passenger side, starting at the rear. Same as the other side. There's absolutely nothing that we can fault the car for. Rocker panels. Uh, where they join into the uh, rear uh, quarters are just as nice and fresh and straight as can be. Uh, quarter panels themselves are just absolutely beautiful. No dents, no dings, no marks. Chrome around the back window is just flawless. Hatch shelf in the back, it looks like the day it left the factory. The interior obviously is the same way. Um, trim around the uh, drip rail, uh, nice as can be. Tops of the doors, whiskers, the glass on this car has no flaws in it. Again, not tinted, just plain glass, but that's the way these cars would have come. Uh, the interior of the car matches the outside. Everything red, red, red. You gotta like red. Everyone does. Uh, fantastic looking car. Really great looking car. The way the doors fit the quarters, like I said, the rocker panel going up onto the uh, quarter the same way. Just as nice as can be. Uh, rubber around your vent wings is absolutely soft and nice and fresh. Door mates up to the uh, right front fender just as it does on the other side, nice as can be. No overhang, great car, absolute fantastic car. Now, this car is a, is a four speed car, it's got 391 posi rear end in it. It is a 413, it is a max wedge, and it's a lot cheaper. It does not have documentation with it, if you want that, we have the same thing in a Plymouth in a 63 Max Wedge that was in the Chrysler Museum, documented to the nth degree, but you're not going to buy that car for what you will this car, and this car is a four-speed instead of being a punch-button automatic, and it's red. This car is available at Hangsters in Daytona, and I defy somebody to find another one this quality for what we're asking for this car. This is a gift of a lifetime for somebody. It's fantastic, fantastic play toy for someone in the summer. And one of my favorite, favorite cars, uh, 413 Cross Ram Max Wedge, 1962. Dart 330, real light body, real neat, neat car. The car is just incredibly done. Um, you can, I, I'm gonna describe it, but you can see underneath the car is just absolutely brand new. Uh, we have cross drilled, brand new disc brakes in the front, new brake hardware, new um, steering box, New uh, pitman arm, new idler arm, new steering shaft, uh, new uh, tie rod ends, 
Sway bars are light duty as they should be for 1962 for a, uh, a cross ramp car. You can see the engine is just as nice and fresh as can be. The car is entirely done from top to bottom. Uh, Chrysler 4 speed transmission, which is totally indestructible. Uh, new clutch, new pressure plate. Uh, subframes don't have any marks or scuffs or anything on them. This particular car, if you notice, has the subframe connectors to it, front to back. So pretty much it has a, uh, a full perimeter frame um, as the larger cars would have had. Um, fantastic car. Three inch, not two and a half, not two and an eighth, three inch pipes coming off the factory cast iron exhaust manifolds. Also new shocks in the front, I forgot to mention. No sway bar because we don't use that in drag racing. Um, floor pans are absolutely gorgeous, beautiful. The structural supports underneath are just like brand spanking new. It goes into two three inch stainless mufflers. Um, they have a real nice original equipment sound to them, a nice pop, nice crack to them. Uh, great looking car underneath. Brand new dive drive shaft, new U joints. Um, all new uh, parking brake hardware that you can see is all hooked up and functional. Uh, brake lines are new. Uh, fuel line also is new on the uh, passenger side. Uh, they went with aluminum on this particular one. It, it was uh, steel from the factory, but now it's aluminum. Um, fantastic car. Just really a great car. Okay, continuing on. Uh, the floor pans in the back are just like the front. Absolutely flawless. No rust, no deterioration at all. Rear drum brakes, new shocks in the back, just like the new ones in the front. Almost looks like a set of super stock springs. I didn't check the part numbers on them, but they have a nice arch to them. Um, great looking set of springs. The three inch outlets on the uh, mufflers go down to uh, two and an eighth. Tailpipes appear to be stainless steel with the correct type turndowns in the back, as Mopar would have had them in 1962. A subframe in the back that is connected to the front as you can see with a, a, a real well-made subframe uh, connecting structure it's also welded to the floor pan so it is pretty much a real perimeter frame on this car at this point very very strong drop downs are just the way they came from the factory uh, original equipment gas tank I don't know what you could possibly find wrong with this car this car is absolutely as gorgeous a vehicle as we have in our building. It would be a great uh, addition to anyone's collection and a hell of a nice car to drive and makes sounds that will make your spine tingle. Fantastic car.